day in the land of the living. And it's great because God made it. And it's great because he has shown us mercy and grace to live in it. So give him all the praise. All the praise. for his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and walked the earth day for all of our sins. We ask that you would join in and help us when we sing. Clap your hands, clap your feet, and rejoice. We are all here to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Everyone's looking good on this second Sunday here in December. Reverend Slaughter and Brother AJ, you all can get me going with. How did everybody wake up this morning? How did you wake up? Did you wake up with the Lord on your mind this morning in church? Just out of curiosity, I just want to do a check. Reverend Slaughter, help me out. Bring me in a little bit. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on the Lord. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed Song. <laughs> you can sneeze. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. If you would, please join me for our scripture reading. Our scripture is coming out of the Psalms of David, the 35th Psalm. Plead my case, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of the shield and buckler and stand up for my help and draw out the spear and stop those who perceive me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. May the Lord add a blessing and read into his holy word. Amen. Amen. This morning as I go through the day, I ask the Lord that to lead and guide me every step of the way. For Lord, you know that you've been good to me. You've been good to me, and you've been good to everybody in this building. Have mercy upon me as we go through this day. Continue to lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Have mercy, Heavenly Father. Have mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Mercy right now suits the case. Have mercy. Mercy, Heavenly Father. And Lord, as we go through this day, asking that that will go with us. Lead and guide us, Heavenly Father, in the way that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, have mercy upon us. Right now, right now, Heavenly Father, continue to lead and guide us 
Heavenly Father. Have mercy, Heavenly Father. Bless those, Heavenly Father, that are on the dangerous highways this morning, Heavenly Father. Have mercy upon them, Heavenly Father. Continue to lead and guide them in the way that they would have them to go. Heavenly Father, continue to walk by our side, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, continue to lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, continue to uh, thank you for the breath that I have this morning. Heavenly Father, have mercy upon us. Heavenly Father, continue to lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, continue to lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, have mercy right now. Mercy right now, Heavenly Father. Mercy right now, Heavenly Father. Continue to guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Have mercy, Heavenly Father. Have mercy, Heavenly Father. Mercy right now suits the case. Heavenly Father, continue to walk by our side, Heavenly Father, as we go through this day. Heavenly Father, lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, continue to walk by our side this morning. Walk by our side this morning. Heavenly Father, continue to walk by our side this morning. Heavenly Father, as we go through this day, Heavenly Father, we ask that they will go with us. Heavenly Father, continue to lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, continue to lead us and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, have mercy right now. Mercy right now. Mercy right now. Heavenly Father, as we go through this day, Heavenly Father, watch over us. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, continue to lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, have mercy upon us right now. Right now, Heavenly Father. Right now, Heavenly Father. Right now, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, continue to lead us and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Have mercy. Mercy right now. Mercy right now. Mercy right now. Mercy right now. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Mercy right now. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. And, Lord, when we can't lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. And, Lord, when we can't travel this dangerous highways anymore, when we can't drive in the way that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, have mercy upon us right now. Right now. Right now, Heavenly Father. Right now, Heavenly Father. Lord, continue to lead and guide us. Lord, have mercy upon us right now. Mercy. 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 Mercy suits the case, Heavenly Father. Have mercy. And Lord, when we can't lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. And Lord, when we can't drive in the way that you would have us to go. Lord, when we can't lead, lead and lead us in the way that you would have us to go. Lead us, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, who we can't 
lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Lord, continue to lead and guide us. Lead and guide us. Heavenly Father, when we can't call upon your holy and your righteous name anymore, when we can't bow down before thee in the name of prayer, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask it that you would lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Have Lord, have mercy. Have Lord, have mercy. Have Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We praise this prayer. Lord, have mercy. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We praise this prayer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So you got me inspired, sir. Thank you. Bless you. Church, did y'all like that prayer that was written by Deacon Ross? Come on. Come on. We have this next song that was first brought to us coming from our great Deacon Wright. He, I love how he sang this particular song. Then he led it to one of our gentlemen who has gone on to be with the Lord, Brother Wallace. Then we also led this song to Brother AJ at one time. So now I'm going to get my particular version of this particular song. I hope you all like it. I'm going to sing, Mother Bill. Too much. Too much. I'm calling your name because I need you, Lord. Right now, Lord. I'm calling your name because I need you, Lord. Right now, Lord. One more time. Thank you. Thank you. I'm calling your name because right now I need you, Lord. 
remember, God is good all the time. Amen. If you have need of something, call on God. He is the great provider. He has provided his son Jesus down the cross and the blood that covers all our past sin, present sin, and will cover our future sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I am Lady Patricia Smith, and I am representing Antioch East Baptist Church, Courtesy Gill. And on behalf of Senior Pastor Dr. Michael A. Smith, myself, and the entire congregation, we would like to say good morning and welcome. At this time, will our visitors please stand? Again, we're so happy to see you worshiping with us today. You may be seated. Thank you. So whether you're in the sanctuary or live streaming, we are blessed to have you join with our Antioch family on this glorious day that the Lord has made. Later in the service, you will receive an invitation to join our family to become a member of Antioch East Baptist Church. May God continue to keep you and guide you. This is my prayer. At this time, you will now hear the welcome song. card from Deacon Hargrove and family, Deacon and Deaconess Gary Hargrove and family. To Reverend Dr. Michael A. Smith, First Lady Patricia Smith, and the Antioch East Baptist Church families, we would like to thank you all for your help during the sudden passing of our grandson as we help to cope uh, during with your calls, your cards, donations, and words of encouragement and your support cannot go without being mentioned. Again, this is from Deacon and Deaconess Gary Hargrove and the Hargrove family. Amen. 
To my family, Antioch East, want to thank everyone that prayed for me. I'm on the road to recovery. To Pastor Smith, thank you for your kind words and prayer. Somehow just saying thank you doesn't seem like enough, but I hope you know how much your kindness means to me. This comes from Sister Rosemarie Brown, the daughter of Mother Rosa Nelson. Amen. The Sunday School will be having their annual Christmas celebration next Sunday at 9.15 during the Sunday School hour. We are asking everyone to come out and worship with us. If you would like to participate, please contact Mother Wanda Miller or Deaconess Barbara Sneed. There are several meetings after worship service today, so please listen up. There will be a courtesy guild meeting immediately following worship service in Mother Eloise Leach Sunday School class. Thank you, Deacon Berg. There'll be a joyful hands meeting today after service in the conference room next to the admin office. Thank you, Sister Mildred Mac Maddox. Usher ministry number one will meet in the dining hall following worship. Thank you, Deacon Gary Hargrove. CYF meeting in the Sunday school area. Thank you, Mother Wonder Miller. Board of Directors meeting in the Sullen Intermediate class. Thank you, Sister Virginia Burford. The Outreach Ministry will meet in the SP Patterson class. Thank you, Evangelist Nayutha Ross. Also, the Outreach Ministry will be going to East Lake Arbor Healthcare on next Saturday, December 17th, from 1.30 until 2.30. This is on Fifth Avenue in Decatur. We would love to see you there. Again, this is coming from Evangelist Ross. The CORE Clinic, next Sunday, December 18th, the CORE Vaccine Clinic will be returning to the church from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m., offering the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer and the Moderna booster shots and flu shots. There will be a pediatric nurse on duty as well as offering the vaccines to children aged 5 to 11. If you receive the vaccine or booster, you will receive a Visa gift card. You will not receive a gift card if you get the flu vaccine. You must register with Sister Teresa Wells, who will be at the back of the clinic before you can receive your vaccine or flu shot. Red and white ball. Saturday, February 4th, 2023. The Women Day Committee will be sponsoring a red and white ball. Mark your calendar and come out and dance with the stars at Antioch East Baptist Church. Tickets will be $25 per person. You can purchase your tickets starting today from Deaconess Pamela Bradley and Deaconess Alexis Walton. Thank you for supporting Women's Day 2023. Deaconess Barbara Sneed, Chair, and Deaconess Katrina Bryant, Co-Chair. Members, if you would like to share your birthday or anniversary, please contact the Administrative Office with your information via phone or email to ensure we recognize you. These conclude all of the announcements for this week, and I would like to leave you with this quote from Arthur Louise Smith. You can't reach anything new if your hands are still full of yesterday's junk. God bless you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I've been asked to lead us in the offering prayer this morning. And if you're able to stand, would you please stand? Hallelujah. 
Isaiah says that those who put their faith in God will renew their strength. If you have trust in the Lord this morning that he loves you, you ought to be ready before, to go before the Lord. Amen. That he loves you in spite of you. He loves you. He died for you. He wants to see you come to heaven with him. So let us pray to our creator this morning. Let us go together in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Giving us life, Father, in a day that we've never seen before. Father, and we'll never see again. Father, you didn't have to include us in your plan, but you did. Father, life is so precious as we have more of it, Lord. Father, we realize we have more behind us than we have in front of us. But you're still a good God. Lord, you've made a way out of no way so many times. Lord, you woke us up, Father, and brought us out of the Maury clays of life. Father, set us on solid ground, Lord, Father, and gave us another chance. Lord, you're a good God. Father, we know that prayer changes things, Lord. Prayer opens the door, Lord, Father, to the kingdom of heaven, Lord. Father, that you're listening, Lord, Father, for your children, Lord, to call your name. Jesus. Many of us are suffering this morning, Lord, either physically, or emotionally, Lord, Father, financially, Lord, Father, lost jobs, Lord, Father, children, Father, astray, Lord, Father, loved ones, Lord, lost during this pandemic. Lord, we are hurting in so many different ways. But, Lord, we know that you know all about that, and you've already worked it out. So, Lord, we come as a church family. Father, in corporate prayer, to say, Lord, we love you. We need you, Lord. Father, we desire to be with you, Lord, and to please you, Lord. Touch our heads, Father, from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet, Lord, Father. Cover us, Lord. Father, whatever you do, Father, include us in it, Lord, Father. Father, we just want to be in the number. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for hearing our cry this morning. You know the needs that we have and all the tears that we shed, Lord. Lord, but you are still God. And we can come to you when we need you. And you're faithful to do whatever it is that needs to be done. Father, we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Bless the Lord. You made a way for me. You made a way for me. You made a way for me.
Good morning, Annie, y'all. Good morning. It's a blessing to be here this morning. God been good to us. I know he has been good to me. Okay. Father God, I come to you this morning. Standing on your word. Lord, I ask you to bless my pastor. Bless his wife and his family. Bless your mother, the Dickel. Lord, I ask you to bless each and everyone all over this land. Going to the White House. Thank God that we have elected a president, a, a senator, to take us back to Washington, D.C. Thank you. Lord, I ask you to also bless each and every one that God had blessed, to, that he has bestowed upon us the treasure. Now it's time for us to give back a portion of what God has given to each one of us. He didn't want us to give all back, just a portion. So, Lord, uh, we ask that you would give back just a little. Bless the one who has and bless the one who do not have. Thank you. Thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
Amen. Jesus. I just want to give praises to God who's deserving of all our praises. I came out with the deacons doing devotion and I hear Deacon Amos Ross, who served as the chair of the deacon ministry for over 25 years. And to hear him give praises to God and hear his prayer, that's a blessing all by itself. I no, this morning, people trying to figure out who this young lady is. And I want you to know that last week I met this family. And Lady Patricia had been keeping in touch with them from the first day they walked in. And every week she tells me that she wanted me to meet them. And for some reason, we didn't get a chance to meet. But I met the grandparents, Brother Frank and Sister Jack, Jackie. And I want to make sure that I believe it is Jaslyn. I want to make sure, but I get it right, Jaslyn. I, once I got it, I got it, Jaslyn. 
And I want to say about Sister Jasmine, that young lady who was singing with her grandparents who've been visiting our church for over two months almost. She said that I sing, and if I'm not mistaken, I still would get the other grandchildren down. I know Nala. Uh, and with them, with this family, she said, I want to sing. I like singing. I introduced her to Reverend Slaughter. had no idea that she and her grandmother would be up there with them today. So we get praise. God will continue to hear our prayer. Before I go any further, I please, let's go in prayer. Heavenly Father, we stand in agreement with you. Lord, if we're out of order with you, put us in order. If we're ahead of ourselves, pull us back. If we think that we're above you, God, keep us at your feet. And Lord, if we think we're too grand to be at your feet, God, teach us what it is to be humble and teach us, God, what it is to surrender all to you. Today we pray over your word and we thank you for your word. And God, have thy favor upon us. Have thy favor upon your children, not only the ones here in Antioch East, but around the world. Have mercy upon our live streamers that are with us today that wanted to be here, but for whatever reason could not. You are the God that is almighty. You are on the throne. And we give you all the praises in Jesus' name. And to God be the glory. Amen. Well, you know, we're in Advent time. This is the third week of Advent, and a lot of people hear the word Advent and say, what does that mean? It starts on November the 27th, and it goes through December the 24th. Advent is where we are celebrating the preparation and celebrating the birth of Christ, but also preparing for the second coming, because he is coming. You can be rest assured, as surely as we're born, surely we're going to die. But I can promise you Jesus Christ is coming to claim his church. In these past two weeks, we know that on November the 27th, we preach it's time to lay it down and pick it up. Last week, Evangelist Nayutha Ross came forward and stated, is it too hard to love God's people? Well, this week, as we prepare for the celebration of our Lord and Savior's birth, we celebrate Christmas is a time where we find many people, if no other time within the season of the years, you'll find people feeling some kind of well, a little, a little giddy, a little much focused about, you know, it used to be about giving gifts. People say, now I'm just glad to be alive. But it's about gifts. It's about us being able to just that season when you feel something different in the atmosphere. Well, we're in this period of time that we want to talk about a subject while we are preparing to celebrate our Lord and Savior's birth. I, I have an announcement at the end from the angel tree, but I, I want to get this sermon out the way so we can be able to move forward and know what God expects of us. But I want to talk to you today about two verses in the Bible, and they're really easy verses to read, but they're also verses that are so profound it calls us to check ourselves. It is a verse where it calls us to go into the heart and see where we are and where we need to be. And I want you, if you don't mind standing, we're going to go to Psalm 55 and 22. Psalm 55 and 22. And I want you to take a thumbprint and put at Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 28th verse. So we have Psalm 55 and 22. Then we have Matthew 11 and 28. And if you don't have your Bible, please look at our monitors. We have the word of God right before you. And Psalm 55 and 22 reads in the King James Version, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Matthew 11 and 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I 
will give you rest. Brothers and sisters, you may be seated. Ushers, I thank you for standing your post, and God, you may be seated as well, and I want to talk to you for a moment about unload the baggage. I talk to you about unload the baggage. I've taken what God has brought before me in Psalm 55 and 22. I asked when we leave the service today if you would go home and read the verses that are before you, but I want you to really understand Psalm 55 and 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Brothers and sisters, I got news for you. We all are carrying some kind of baggage. We might as well face it. We all got some baggage that we're carrying. You may not know what's in my baggage, but, but I know that God knows the baggage that I'm carrying. I may not know the baggage that you're carrying, but you're carrying some baggage along the way. But in this particular chapter, you will find where it is King David. King David is in a place and time that he is crying out to the Lord. He is hurt. King David is hurt right now because not only does his son Absalom is building up against him, but someone who served with him has turned against him. He will tell you in Psalm 55, we were in the house of the Lord together giving praises to God. And you turned on me and now my heart is heavy. Brothers and sisters, you know that David is already dealing with his wrong dealings with Absalom, his own son. His own son is building up against him because he wants to take over the kingdom. But we know what God's word has said in reference to David. David is God's anointed one. And we know the next anointed one that will come after David is Solomon. So even in the midst of it all, Absalom with all his foolishness. David realized when he called upon the Lord, even in that particular book of that psalm itself, he says, I wish I had the wings like a dove that I could fly away from all of this. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we want to fly away from our situation, don't we? Sometimes we wish that we could go to sleep and it'll all be gone. It'll be behind us the next morning. But I want you to know about a dove. When a dove flies, it flies up to the rocks and hides itself. But I want you to know that doves can fly a distance. The doves want to fly away from the storm. But brothers and sisters, in this life that we live, we need to ask for the wings of eagles that we're able to fly above the storm. Even when the storm comes our way, we want God to give us the wings that we're able to fly. I... I want to talk to you about baggage. I, I remember when I would be traveling for my job and on going to the airport, and I would always try to not pack more than I needed. But sometimes, no matter how much you try, you're going to have that little extra weight. You say, I'm going to go running, so let me make sure I put my running shoes in there. I want to make sure if I have dinner, I got my dinner shoes in there. I want to make sure I have the right clothing. If I decide to go wherever it is, I got enough clothing. And you know you've always been told to carry enough undergarment when you travel. So what you're finding as you pack your bag, the weight is increasing. I will never forget when I was traveling, I carried one bag, but on my way coming back, I put that same bag in there. It had a little more weight. I had to find another bag to better put my other belongings in because I was being charged extra if I was bringing another bag. Now, you get a free bag you know you can carry on the plane. It's called a carry-on. Now, everybody get a chance to carry a carry-on, but you find those that are going to go against the rules. They're going to try to put an extra bag in there, but you only have one, really. And you ever found people fighting over the space on a plane trying to get their bag in there. I want to tell you there's a fight going on with the baggage that we're carrying. Brothers and sisters, the baggage that we're carrying is baggage that has caused this world to be in turmoil. Brothers and sisters, we got baggage that we see. We got baggage with emotions. 
We got baggage with our finances. We got baggage with our children. We got baggage with our spouses. We got baggage with our fellow and brothers and sisters in the church. We got baggage with the people that we work with. There's so many baggages that we're dealing with. But I want to tell you to take that baggage off yourself and let Jesus carry it. I, I, I want you to know today in God's word, the first thing I want you to know that there is one that David truly is heartbroken. And I'm going to tell you with it is also Ahithophel. And Ahithophel was his advisor, one of his right-hand advisors. He had unturned on him. He decided to line himself up with Absalom and get some of Absalom baggage where he fall out of the grace of God and not into the mercy and grace of God. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know, stop trying to carry everybody's baggage. Stop picking up their stuff. Let them carry their own stuff. Stop carrying the stuff that they got going on. Because if you try to carry that stuff and your stuff, you ain't moving nowhere. You just weighed it down with life troubles. We should be better than this. What is it that you want me to preach today? What is it that you want me to do to make you feel good and make you jump around and make you say, thank you, Jesus? What is it that you expect for me to do today? What is it that I can say to you that will last? I want you to know the sermon last week, is it too hard to love God's people? It worked last week, but next week you come and you're hungry for something else. Are we ever satisfied? What is it that can make you feel good all the time? I tell you what it is, it's Jesus. You're trying to grab on a quick fix, but there's only one fix, and his name is Jesus. I want you to know, and even in God's word, when I want you to know the first thing, it's too heavy for us to carry. This thing is too heavy. Life is heavy. I can't carry life because life is carrying me. But then I realize life will throw you whatever it has. It'll keep putting stuff in your bag. You'll keep getting weighted down. But you've got to learn how to let it go and let God. We're holding on to things that were yesterday and as it was stated too. How can we move forward with today if we still hold on to junk from yesterday? Whatever happened yesterday, put that stuff out on the street. Get that bag out of your house because it's weighting your heart and your minds down. This is not of God. It is of us when we do that. You want to talk to me about what you're carrying in your bag? i get you to cry if I start pulling out what's in my bag. But I realize that it is not for me to carry. I realize as a pastor, I can't carry your bags. But what I can do is pray with you over your bags, stand with you with those bags, and know that Jesus will deliver you with the bags. And you can't carry mine. We, we understand that even in the book of Numbers, we see in Numbers 11, 14, and 15, I am not able to bear all this people alone because it's too heavy for me. If thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee. Out of the hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, let me not see my wickedness. I want to say, even with Moses, Moses got tired. We all know that my Bible study scholars, we've gone through that. Moses said, I don't want these bags. You get these bags. But then when God was getting ready to move the bags out of the way, he reminded him, God, you promised that you would take care of your people. See, we all get stirred up. We all got things get, to get us to go one way or another. But we got to stay focused on what God has called us to do. I want you to know the reason the church doors have changed. Church is not like it used to be. Everybody you're not going to see coming in and want to see always up. And some people just want to hit the screen and the button to be able to have church when they want to have church. But the question is, who are you serving and whose side are you on? What baggage has caused you to come out of the well of God and be in a baggage claim where there's no Jesus? It's, it's too heavy for us to carry. It's too heavy for us to carry when, we, when we're going through storms. It's too heavy for us to carry when we see somebody else weighted down and we want to change the world. We want to make it better for them. But sometimes God got you in a situation right now because he is trying to prune you for a greatness. He is trying to work with you so you'll understand what it is to be in a storm and then know that God will give you the strength to be able to fly over the storm. 
God is working with us. But who want a heavy bag? I see many going to the airport and they're trying to get their bag out of the trunk of a car out of the back seat and they're just pulling on it. But then you see a porter that'll come along and say, can I help you with your bag? I want to know that somebody want to help you with your bag. But you got to be willing to surrender it over. Have you ever traveled and you lost your luggage? And you ever go out and buy something else? And they say, once I find your luggage, we'll get it to you. And sometime your luggage would arrive at, at the time you get ready to head back home. But I, I, I want you to know that it really is too heavy to carry. The second thing I want you to know, if you're carrying this luggage, it's a hindrance to your progression. Why are we not moving forward? Why like we at a mark time? Why is it that we're moving backwards? Why is it that it's not like nothing is happening for me? Sometimes you got to look at what you're carrying. Sometimes what you're carrying is keeping you from your blessing. Sometimes what you're carrying is not giving you opportunity to see what's ahead because your baggage got you weighted down. You're not looking up. You just keep looking down. It's so heavy. I can't carry it. I don't see what's ahead of me. Get that stuff off of you. And once you get the baggage off of you, you'll find your back coming straight up. You'll find yourself being able to see what's ahead. What God has for you is greater than what you thought it would ever be. But you've got to get rid of the load. Get the load off of you. Our young people are carrying a load. They're carrying issues, but I want to say something too. Those middle ages and those seniors are carrying loads too. We all got baggage that we're carrying. Some of our suitcases are much older than some of our young people's suitcases. But if you realize that it is causing you from proceeding forward, what do you do? We're celebrating Christmas. We're coming in a time we're remembering our Lord and Savior entered into this world. But even the Jews... Even the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't want to progress. You know why? Because Jesus didn't come in the suitcase they thought he was coming in. But I want to let you know when God gives you a deliverance of a baggage, when he delivers his luggage, you ain't got to worry about Amazon. You ain't got to worry about FedEx. You ain't got to worry about UPS. You ain't got to worry about anything else because when God delivers, no man can steal your package. We're seeing now when some of the drivers are delivered, delivered they put the bag package on the porch, and then they come back and grab it and steal it. I want to let you know when God puts something on the porch, man cannot steal your blessings. Man cannot steal your anointing. Man cannot steal what God has in store for you. They may think they got it, but they took the wrong thing because God left it with you. I want you to know it's time to unload that package. It's time to unload that hate. It's time to unload that jealousy. It's time to unload that bitterness. It's time to unload that wickedness. It's time to unload that deceitfulness. It's time to unload what not of God and let it be of God. The time is now. If we don't progress, it's because we've allowed man to steal the joy that the Lord has given us. If we don't move forward, it's because we didn't want to move forward. If we don't grow from one another, it's because we shut the other person out. My heart is lifted when I saw this beautiful young sister come up. Last week, she made her request be made known. This week, she stands up because God heard her request. That's what we got to do. We got to get in line and let it be known what we want from God and trust God to deliver. There will be those that will say, She's not a member of our church. Who does she think she is to get up there and sing? Well, who is she? I don't know anything about her. Who are we to keep God's children from being able to be a part of his kingdom building? Who are we to hold another person down? 
If you see her singing and you want to sing, get in the choir. If you see the deacons preaching or praying and you want to pray, get with the deacons. If you see the mothers hymning and saying, thank you, Lord, get with the mothers. If you see members ushering on the door and you want to usher, get on the usher boy. But stop using other people for your own baggage. It's time to get that stuff off of us. We're being weighted down, and God got greatness for us. And people say every Sunday, is pastor preaching to me, or is he talking about me? I want you to know I don't give anybody that much credit. I'm talking about all of us. We need to do God's work. We need to be about God's business. We need to tell God that we're ready to let the baggage go. And please don't give me that much credit to think about me. Only thing you got to do is pray for me that God will use me. Pray for me that I walk right, I talk right, I live right, I pray right, I guide right, I show right, I dance right. I do what the Lord has. My mama taught me a long time ago. If you keep your eyes on everybody else, you're going to go blind. If you keep your eyes on everybody else, you're going to misstep. If you keep your eyes on everybody else, God can't use you. So I got my eyes on the prize. I got my eyes on Jesus. Guide me. Lead me. And show me how. The last thing I want to leave with you if Jesus took it, why do we want to pick it back up? If Jesus has taken this, we've given it to God. Say, I trust you, God. God, use me. You know the best thing for me. We say, God, have your way. You don't want God to have your way, his way. Because if his way not your way, you're not satisfied. But I say, let God have his way. God, use us. God, have your way in my life. Show me what I am supposed to do. Have your way in my life that I'm able to lead somebody else to Christ. Have your way in my life, God, that people will see Jesus in me and not see me in myself. It was the Lord Jesus who wanted to put it down. He told God, take this bitter cup from me. Take it from me. Get this baggage from me. Because he had the cup of the world's sins. I don't want to carry this thing. This thing is too heavy. This thing, I don't know. But God, just in case. Just in case. If it's your will, let thy will be done. Whatever God will is for you, let it be done. First Peter 2 and 24 reminds us too. He himself bears our sins with his own body. He was hung on a tree. He bare our baggage. We can give it to him. Brothers and sisters, why is it we don't want to give it to Jesus? We say we're a child of God. If we're a child of God, that means we have unloaded our baggage to him. I'm going to tell you, that suitcase is heavy. It's weighing your back. Now, how many of you all have back problems in here? You ever raise your hand, but you can. You got back problems. How many have hip problems? How many have knee problems? How many have other shoulder problems? You can't carry that baggage because it's going to break every one of those things down. Let it go. Let it go. If another brother or sister baggage in your life, let them go. Let them go because they're taking the joy out of your soul. They're taking the joy out of your spirit. I want to be among some baggage on a baggage claim that's about Jesus. Knowing that God got us and knowing that God will see us through. I think about Luke 1, 31 through 33. When God visit Mary and tell her that she will give birth to the Lord Jesus. She didn't ask for that baggage. 
She was minding her own business. Sometime in life, we don't ask for the baggage that come our way. We be minding our own business. But I want you to know that the Lord God will send certain baggage for you to carry. Because he want to build you up. He wants you to know that there's a better way. He wants you to know that you're going to need me. Because sometimes we get too comfortable and self-dependent, independent on ourselves and not dependent on Jesus. And we lose our way. But we can't do that. I want to talk to you for a moment about the preparation of a porter. I told you the porter is the one that grabs your bags. They're the one that makes sure that they get the bags to where they're supposed to go. But I wanted us to prepare for the porter that we're going to be celebrating in the next two weeks. This porter came into this world of sin that we may live again. He comes into this world picking up your bag, picking up yours, 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 picking up mine that we wanted to be picked up. But he's our porter. With porters, you always want to give them a tip. With Jesus, you don't have to give him a tip. Jesus already said, it's no charge. But Jesus, when you're getting ready to take your trip, don't worry about your bags getting lost. I got it. You don't have to worry about baggage claim because I come here to claim you. I come back to claim a church without a spot or a wrinkle. I come back to claim you because I know that you love me. And if you love me, I'm going to claim you because I'm collecting all my baggage because there's a day I'm coming back to claim a church without a spot or a wrinkle. I want to say just like when we travel, we put our names on our baggage. It's your name on your baggage so when Jesus comes back, he can pick you up and say, this is one of my children. But if your name not on the baggage, he's going to walk past you and go and grab another baggage that got his name on it. Will you be ready when he comes back? Will you be ready when he comes back? I'm saying behind all of this, behind the ministerial collar, behind the black shirt, am I going to be ready when he calls my name? Am I going to be able to say, God, I lived for you. I died for you. I serve you. I held on to you. I called out your name. I said, I don't know if I can make it. But you told me to get this baggage off of me because you're going to carry it to the cross. Oh, yes. This baggage is too heavy. And it's stopping my progression. But when I give my name and my life to Christ, I want you to know nobody, 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 nobody can keep me out of heaven. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Are you going, are you going, are you going? Is your baggage packed? Is your house in order? Are you ready for the great breakthrough? Jesus, 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 thank you, Lord. Nobody but you, Lord. When I was in trouble, you brought me over. When I was drowning, you brought me up. And when I couldn't find my way, you took a baggage like me, beat up, kicked around, stumped on me, spit on, and you picked me up. He took it to the cross. He took it to the cross. He took it to the bare bar tomb. He took it to the day of resurrection and the day of ascension. But before all that could happen, he had to enter this world. Brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, time is at hand. Time is at hand. You can play with him all you want to play with him, but time is over for playing. It's the real deal. And the thing is that I'm a baggage of the Lord. Unload your baggage and let God pick you up. Unload your baggage and let God see you through. Unload your baggage because you belong to him. Is it a good thing to belong to Jesus? David was hurt. Ahithophel had betrayed him. He was his counselor, his advisor. He turned on him. His son Absalom 
turned on his own father. But it's communion Sunday. Judas turned on Jesus. It's a hurting feeling when you've been turned on. It's a hurting feeling when you've been talked about. It's a hurting feeling when everyone sees what they want to see, but they don't want to see what God has to be seen. Ahithophel hung himself. Absalom was shot three times in the heart by Joab. But then it was ten that killed him. And Judas hung himself. I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, stop carrying that baggage of waiting for God to get somebody back. Or waiting for God to do what you thought he was going to do to them. Or to you. Unload that stuff. And walk with Jesus. There's no greater way but with Jesus. I don't know about your baggage. But I tell you something. In my baggage, you'll see all those things that I have done in my lifetime. But through God's mercy and grace, he sealed that suitcase up. And he tossed that one aside. But he had a new suitcase with my name on it. And that new suitcase said that I am made new. That new suitcase said, I'm forgiven. That new suitcase said, watch out and watch God. That new suitcase said, more than a conqueror. That new suitcase said, I belong to Jesus and don't touch. I belong to Jesus and don't touch. You belong to Jesus and don't touch. You belong to Jesus and don't touch. The doors of the church are open. But I want you to remember that airport baggage claim. You know how your baggage go around and around and around, waiting for you to pick it up? And I don't know about you all. I know what my baggage looked like. And I put a certain thing on that so it could stand out. But you ever seen anybody's suitcase look just like yours? And you grabbed it? And when you grabbed it, you realize it wasn't yours. God won't make that mistake with us. When you travel on the bus and you get to your destination, you see the driver putting all the suitcases aside and just pushing them out. And you go searching for your suitcase. You don't have to worry about Jesus. You don't have to search for you. He knows exactly where you are. I want to say to you today, nobody but Jesus. I can unload my baggage. I'm unloading my mind and heart for anything I thought or anything that was not of the will of God, I remove that. I unload my heart and mind even when it tells me to hate somebody. I have to remove that stuff for me. I have to remove my mind and heart from when it said, call that person out or call that person out. And you know how we all, we get in our cars and say, I wish I would have got them told. But I'm glad God intervened. Because I don't want to bring shame to Jesus. I want to bring glory to his name. So brothers and sisters, where are you with your load? The doors of the church are open. But if you're carrying a heavy load and you want to give your life to Jesus, come on down. If you want to give your life to Jesus, I want to join. Come on down. If you be not dismayed, if you're saying, I'm ready, come whatever, on. Whatever, ever, ever, be tired. God will take care of His way, love God will take care of you. One thing about joining the church, you don't get to be forced about God joining the church. You do it when your heart is told you to come on down. Because mom and dad is doing it. Grab your 
brother and sister don't mean Jesus. Me. But just in case it's Take warm, care of me. it's open. God will take care of you. Oh, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. wife, sister, Jackie Crutcher. I just want to share this before I ask them, are they coming by Christian experience, by baptism, whatever, or by letter. When Lady Patricia met them, she was talking with them. They said, I don't want to jump too quick. We, we want to just check out the church for a little while. She said, I'm not looking for a huge church, but I'm looking for a church that is loving and a church that has God in them. I don't blame them. I wouldn't jump so quick either. I would have to look before joining them. And the Yankees, apparently we have shown them love. We have shown them that we are a God-fearing church. Now they want to join our church. Frank and Sister Jackie, are you all coming by Christian experience? Coming by baptism or by letter? They're coming by Christian experience. <laughs> Antioch East, I know we can do better because we don't have a dry spell for a while. Oh, thinking right. that, hey, God, when are you going to send some more to our church? God, are we outdated or what's happened? So I want to say again, Antioch East, they come to join our church. And I'm going to get a chance to meet their daughter. I'm assuming that's who's here today. I look forward to that. And her husband. Because she said, Pastor, with my grandchildren, I, I want their parents to have that experience. 
and I respect them enough. They said, we're the grandparents. They're going to join the church. Don't we're joining. No, their parents have to make that decision with them. I want to say thank you for showing the way. And to God be the glory. <laughs> Brother Crutcher, Sister Crutcher, do you want to say anything at this time? You don't have to, but you can if you want to. I, we did. Sister, um, uh, the pastor's wife, Sister Patricia, she came and we were sitting back there and we were like, okay, we just come to look. And she came back and she, she introduced herself and welcome, made us feel so welcome. And then um, I said, well, pastor wasn't preaching that Sunday. I said, I guess I have to come back another Sunday. And <laughs> she said, well, yeah, you had to come on. You mean you got to come back again. And then when you came last week and, you know, we got a chance to meet you and then you introduced my granddaughter. My, my daughter was out of town, so my granddaughter, my cat, the grandkids. I have four grandkids. The other three are back there as well. They came and they, um, um, you said, my, my oldest granddaughter, Jasmine, said, I like to sing. I want to join the choir. And so I said, and you came and you introduced her to, um, to the Minister of Music. And she said, and we came in, he said, well, yeah, y'all can come on Saturday, come on Saturday to, to choir rehearsal. And my granddaughter said, come on, Mimi, you gonna take me? I said, yeah, I'll take you. And I was just coming to take the baby to, ch to, to the choir rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> and the Minister of Music said, no, well, I, I heard you can sing, so we need you to come on and sing too. So <laughs> I think, I'm, and they were open, you know, and I was thinking too, well, we ain't join, we're not a member of the church, and they letting us join, you know, at least let her use her talents and, and be able to just experience the, the choir, and, and they were just so loving, and they were just, they held, you just with open arms, and the, the, they was you know, encouraging her, you know, she was a little nervous, but they were just encouraging, I was like, this reminds me of home, you know, I grew up in a small church where everybody knew everybody, and then we were in there talking, that doing require rehearsal and they, uh, right before choir, and they was like, well, so-and-so was coming, that's my mama, and that's my cousin, and that's my uncle. I said, this is where we need to be right here, whereas, you know, where it's, it's a family, and you all, you, you seem to be close-knit, and then you love Jesus, so this is where I believe we want to be, so thank you so much for having us. We want to say that our, our new members ministry with Chairman Deacon Carol Mapp, our Vice Chairman Deacon Tavares Bird, and also Dr. Denise Mapp. They will get with you after service. Also, Mother Mary Carithers, who's our church clerk, she'll get your information as well, and they'll let you know about new members class. And once the new members class is done, we will set up a right hand of fellowship. We thank God for you all, and we're glad to have you all. And I just want to pray and say, Lord, bless this beautiful, bless this beautiful family, bless this husband and wife, have your way with them, God. We welcome them into the fold of Antioch East, but into the divine fold, which is your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Your kingdom building. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 And that's Deacon Carol Mapp, and they will get with you all at the service. Okay. Yes. Amen. Amen. Before I go into communion, I want to read this from the Antioch East Baptist Church Angel Tree Ministry. The heart of the Christmas Angel Tree Ministry is to spread a message of cheer and love of Christ to a person who needs it most. This season, we will bless individuals whose lives have been impacted in some way by cancer. Each of our Angel Tree recipients, either cancer survivors or have currently been diagnosed with cancer in our church family. Cancer affects everyone, the young and old, the rich and poor, men, women, and children. This year, the Angel Tree Committee solicited donations from the community and business owners. We would like to thank all of our generous donors for their contributions. We plan to celebrate the recipients with small reception and distribute the gifts on Sunday, December the 18th. Wishing you all a Merry Christmas 
Antioch East Baptist Church, the Angel Tree Ministry, Deaconess Pamela Bradley, Dr. Denise Mapp, Sister Chandra Skelton, and Deaconess Alexis Walton. We thank you. Amen. It is time for communion. Anyone that has not received a communion sacrament, please raise your hand so we can make sure you get one. You know, today's message was talking about unload the baggage. But brothers and sisters, if we don't have love in our hearts for one another, how can we take communion? Brothers and sisters, if we don't have forgiving hearts, how can we take communion? Brothers and sisters, if we're not standing for the Lord Jesus and believing the Lord Jesus, how can we take communion? That's why Apostle Paul said, that which I received of the Lord, I also deliver unto you. In the same night when the Lord Jesus was to be betrayed, he took bread. And then when he took the bread, he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For in the same manner, he also took the cup and said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whomsoever eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of this bread. Wherefore, whosoever eat this bread unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among us, many sleep. Judge ye when ye may not be judged. But if you are judged, you are chastened of the Lord that you should not be condemned of this world. If a man, and we come together, brethren, to eat, let us tarry one with another. But it often says, too, that when we come together, if a man is hungry, let him eat at home. Amen. That we come not together for condemnation. The rest will he set in order when he comes. As we hold the bread, remember, before we was able to hold this bread, he had to enter this world. That's why we're celebrating, because he's our porter. He's our heavy load carrier. He's our battle like in the time of a battle and our shelter in the time of a storm. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray over this communion. We are so unworthy. Even if we have even a thought, thinking that we're so deserving. We're not. But you love us. And you love us enough to give your body. So bless this bread and bless this cup. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we hold the bread together, let us break the bread. Let us eat together. Brothers and sisters, the cup, the New Testament in his blood. Let us all drink together. For often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do show the Lord's death till he comes. It says in the word that they went out to the Mount of Olives, singing praises of hymns. We don't have Mount of Olives, but we do have hills of trials and tribulations. And we have to let this dying world know that our Savior lives. May you please stand. Don't forget all the meetings that were announced. We know that there's several. We ask that God be with you this week. I'd like to share with you next week our Sunday school hour. It will be the Sunday school Christmas service. We ask you all to come. I think we're going to be meeting here in the sanctuary. So let's make sure we're here in the sanctuary starting at 9, 15. 9.15, we're asking all those of you that want you to go to Sunday school. Put a pep in your step and come on in and join us. 
We ask you to do that. But also I want to let you know that we will have service on Christmas Day only for one hour from 1045 to 1145. We understand there will be those out of town, but we can't close the Lord's doors for somebody that want to come in on that Sunday. So we want that to be made known. Other announcements will be in the future regarding watch night. Isn't it good to be able to know and get that load off of us? Isn't it good to be able to say Jesus? I pray over each one of you all. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this hour. God, we pray that you are pleased. That's all that matters. Feed your children. Carry your children. Protect your children, which we know you will. God, we give you all the praise. As Apostle Paul said, finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with us all. To God be the glory. Amen.